Hello guys, this is one who said malicious or dark sin twelve back here in how to do like a swordsman. Uh, before I begin the basic plays, I wanted to cover some trap cards and spell cards we use in the deck. Let's start with um, this is something we can commonly see now that Book of Moon is at one. Enemy controller changes the battle position of one monster your opponent controls, or you can ch you can actually control a face of monster your opponent controls by tributing one of your own monsters. Actually, really good. Some very nice plays. I'm gonna uh, uh, later on. I'm gonna discuss with this card. <clears throat> very nice card overall. I'm gonna put it here. Rinse fourth man of the army. Not a lot of people use it, but some people use it because it brings the full and light quickly to their hand and it thins out the deck. This is basically an extra full and light or an extra bashul because you know it counts for both of them. But other other than that, you have no other targets in the deck for this card. So. It all depends. It's actually personal preference. Book of Moon, really important card in the deck. It's very vital to the activation of Fallen Knight's effect. And yeah, when it was at 3, we used this at all times to abuse a Fallen Knight's effect. But now that it's at 1, well, we have to resort to things like enemy controller for that. But hey, that, ha that actually has brought some kind of pluses on our side because enemy controller is also very versatile in the, in the sense that you can tribute an Xaver that you're about to lose to take control of an opponent's monster. We'll discuss about that later. Mind Control, really great card with, you know, our deck runs a lot of tuners, so yeah, this card is really live in our deck. Any build you do, please put this card in it, it's too important for Xavers. Mystical Space Typhoon, Really good card right now with lots of warnings, royal oppression going on. So yeah, this and skill drain. Skill drain devastates our deck. So yeah, this card is really, really vital for us to protect from those threats. Yeah, very important card. Officer Goblin. I'm mentioning here because I don't have Pile Duality, but Pile Duality and Officer Goblin are really, really, really good cards for a deck, especially a very aggressive X Saber build. You know. Because you really like, like sabers, I'm going to explain later, they, they require a setup before their grand stand, their grand stand plays. So you need cards like Officer Goblin or Part of the Aldi to draw those key cards for the epic play you're going to do a couple turns later. I personally use Officer Goblin because I don't have Part of the Aldi right now, but if you have Part of the Aldi, please use it. Like, it's really, really good. Otherwise, just use Officer Goblin or any other tech cards like Enemy Controller, stuff like that. Alright, up to Traps. Trap Stun. This was actually one of the most common plays back when Cold Wave was active. It's still common, really good still. It's basically, you know, this is what makes <coughs> X, X Saber Hume Life so powerful because you stun the traps, literally. Then you come in with Hume Life and you destroy those traps that cannot activate for the turn. The backdrop with Trap Stun is that it cannot allow you to use cards like Gotham's Emergency Call at the same turn. So basically your swarm is kind of limited. But I'll go over that another card that might actually help you in that situation. Next up we got Gotham's Emergency Call. This is basically our Call Be Haunted. It really, it's a very, very important card of the deck. You cannot run an Xavier build without it. It's too important. It, it's, it's part of our, you know, of our attack formation. So, yeah, you really need this card. Um, I personally run three because I really, it's a very aggressive Xavier build. But some con more control-based builds run two, maybe one. But it's still a very important card, especially even against Mirror Mesh. Like you can steal literally two Xaver monsters from his graveyard with this card as long as an Xaver card is face up on the field counting both sides your side and your opponent's side so yeah this card is really really good compulsory evacuation device some tech stuff some decks run it some decks don't but it's a really good card helps save your fall trolls from uh, you know imminent destruction like from bottomless or you know Bounces back those annoying synchros like Stardust that might get in the way from your Hume Light plays. Um, it's a really great card overall. I suggest you run like one or two. I personally run one 
because I'm still thinking I should substitute it for reinforced truth for for something else like royal oppression. But it's a really great card overall. I really suggest you run it. <clears throat> Torrential tribute, very powerful card. It really stops a lot of plays, and it can really go in your favor, especially if you have a Dark Soul set on the field. Because, you know, Torrential Tribute will destroy the Dark Soul, will destroy all your opponent's monsters, and you get the plus one of Dark Soul. Really great card on the hands of a pro. Mirror Force says it all by itself. Really great card. It actually helps Xavier's maintain field control, especially when you have a full night, like... You have a full knight that already used this effect, like it's no longer useless, but you still want to protect it for next turn. You can use Mirror Force to protect it. Really great card overall. I suggest you run one. Saber Hole. I have I don't have Solemn Warning right here right now, but it's being lent by a friend of mine. So I wanted to bring this little guy in. Saber Hole is actually much more trickier to use than Solemn Warning. Solemn Warning is I highly recommend you if you have Solemn Warning, play Solemn Warning in this deck. Otherwise, you can use this card here. Now, the thing is that this card is very tricky to use because it's um, it requires a lot of skill, it requires a lot of prediction, it requires a lot of judgment, and especially when you're gonna put a card like Amber's Blade face up on the field. <clears throat> but usually, um, you gotta be very careful with this. A lot of pro players can actually read this card before you can even play it. So, you gotta be very careful with this. But still, when you can get it off successfully to negate a Stardust or to negate a Trishula, it does wonders, because it's basically a solemn warning for free. However, I wanna make it very clear, Saber Hole doesn't negate special summons that come from card effects. For example, Monster Reborn, or call the haunted. It can only negate uh, how you call it inherent special summons. So in other words, special summons that come from the hand or from the extra deck. Other than that, it cannot negate that. You know, so that's why I prefer solemn warning. But still, if you want to run saber hole and solemn warning, you can do it. I I highly recommend. It. It's really good. You won't you won't regret it. Finally, seven tools of the bandit amazing card right now I really prefer it over trap stun because it makes me it allows me to play God of Emergency Call, Emergency Call on the same turn that I activate seven tools plus usually your opponents will only have one answer to your swarm so basically one seven tools gets the job done in any case you can use Song Judgment which you should run in this deck anyways so yeah just Seven tools, whatever answer they got for just 1,000 light points, and keep going, keep doing your game, and win. Basically, that's it. All right, I actually ran out of time out of this, so I'm gonna leave the basic plays video for the next chapter. Uh, so yeah, this has been traps and spells with playing like a swordsman. Later, guys.